We're joined now by one of the architects of the Chris Paul deal, Neil O'Shea, the vice president of basketball operations for the L.A. Clippers, who's with us from Los Angeles. Neil, congratulations. Uh, I want to go back through the, sort of the process of all this. Just how tricky a trade was this, given the prominence of the player and his credentials, and secondly, the fact that the NBA had final approval as the de facto owners of the uh, New Orleans Hornets. Well, you know, you know, Matt, I don't think it changed things all that much. Um, you know, Dell Demps and I started talking about this as far back as the Chicago pre-draft camp in May. You know, if, if it ever came to the point where they felt like they were in a position where they had to move Chris, we felt like we had the most desirable assets around the league that could transition a franchise into the future if they moved their franchise players. So, you know, everyone has a decision-making model. Um, I have mine. Uh, Dell had his. Uh, and at the end of the day, it didn't matter who approved the trade, just as long as it got done. Well, they thought they had a trade uh, done last week, of course, with the L.A. Lakers involved in that three-team deal. Then it fell apart when it was rejected by the league. How quickly were you then able to mobilize, jump back in? And at what point did you think you really had something that you could work with and, and not only get approved, but get the Hornets to sign off on as well? Well, you know, I mean, look, it, it was a process. I mean, Dell and I were kind of banging away on the phones for a few weeks leading up to, uh, you know, Dell opted to go with the, uh, the Laker deal. Um, I think he, he did a great job with that deal. It was going to allow him to remain competitive immediately. And then whatever happened in their decision-making model, they kind of went back to the drawing board and felt like, you know, expiring contracts, draft picks, and young players was a better way to go for the future of the Hornets. And Dell and I jumped back in, you know, got back to the drawing board. Um, you know, Dell was the architect of this along with myself and Andy Roser and Vinny Del Negro on our side. And we put together what we thought was a fair and equitable deal. And uh, we're just excited to have Chris. And I think Dell's going to be excited to get the guys he got and the asset in the Minnesota pick. It's going to give him a chance to get another franchise player. Obviously, you had to have Chris's blessing as well, including the agreement that he would play out his current contract through the summer of 2013. What does it mean to your franchise long term? to have the blessing of a player of Chris Paul's stature coming in? Well, you know, it means everything, and it's the only reason we did the deal. Um, you know, less to do with the contract structure and more to do with Chris's commitment. Um, you know, when Chris just kind of, he kind of illustrated to myself and, and Vinny Del Negro just how committed he was to being here long term, um, his commitment to winning, his knowledge of what we had going on here from a roster standpoint and the pieces that he would need to see once he arrived to know that he wanted to be here long term, um, you know, that's really what made it easier, Matt, was knowing Chris really wants to be here. He wants to win. Um, Chris the kind of guy that he has to win to be happy with himself, and that's a position that we're in right now as well. Well, great day for you guys. Congratulations once again. Everybody is watching the L.A. Clippers right now and can't wait to see what Paul is going to be like with Blake Griffin, Chauncey Biltz, and everybody else there. Uh, nice job out of you guys. Good luck.